Welcome back to the Dirty, Filthy, Stinking, Hippie Folk Singer Show. And uh, today's sponsor covering my bald spot is Miller Genuine Draft, which I personally would never drink because I would assume that it probably tastes something like a teamster pissing in your mouth. But if they want to pay for product placement, who am I to say no? And just who am I? Well, I'm Lance Norris, a dirty, filthy, stinking, hippie folk singer. And I know what you're saying to yourself. I, okay, we get the dirty, filthy, stinking part, but you really don't look like much of a hippie or that much of a folk singer, to be honest. Well, as far as the hippie part goes, that's your hang-up, man. I can't help you with that. But you do have a point about the folk singer part. So what I did, I, I did what any self-respecting folk singer would do. I went out and got me a banjo, the second most hated instrument in the folio, behind the accordion and just edging out the ocarina both of which I will play if you don't behave yourselves. Now, since mastering the banjo during our little COVID vacation, I decided to go back over my old songs and see which one of them might be better interpreted by this uh, redneck lute here. And lo and behold, I came across this chestnut that I wrote in high school with my friend David Zobel. Like all real Americans, I had a band in high school, and we would write our own songs. Uh, when I was supposed to be paying attention in history class, I'd be writing lyrics, and then I'd pass them along in the hall to whichever band member I ran into first, and they would write the music while they were supposed to be paying attention in biology or whatever. Much like Karen Carpenter, Mickey Dolenz, and the guy with the afro from Grand Funk, I was the lead singer and drummer in the band. And as a drummer, state and federal law, as well as common sense, barred me from writing any music at the time, so, purely by happenstance, it was David Zobel that put music to this one uh, because he was the first guy I ran into in the hall that was in the band. He was our bass player, and uh, now I think he works for NPR or some silly thing, I don't know. But since we were in high school, uh, this song would be about, what do you think, the girl that got away. Hmm, yeah, it goes like this. <laughs> There's a girl that I worked with one summer I kinda liked her, but it was a bummer Hey, what do you want? I was in high school, okay? You're not gonna get much beyond Moon June poetry at that point, right? And it is true. Uh, I met this girl the summer of my junior year. She was from the next town over, the dreaded Hull. And uh, we were both working at Paragon Park, which is a kind of low-rent amusement park on the beach. But, but I'm getting way ahead of myself here. I get her on the phone almost every night. But I couldn't speak. I was too uptight. Yeah, see, I, w I wasn't the wordsmith that I am now, of course. And I'd get her on the phone and I'd freeze up. Not say a word. And she'd be like, who is this? Who is this? Click, you know. And I'd call every night. And after a while, she just started carrying on conversations with the void at the other end of the line. Which is amazing because this girl could yap. Till one day she goes, I finally figured out who this is. Which, of course, made my testicles disappear up into my throat. This is Michael, isn't it? I know it is. And I'm like, who the hell is Michael, that bastard? But of course, I didn't say anything. I was too nervous to talk. So she continues, listen, Michael, you don't have to be shy. I like you, too. We can just talk. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, you could hear my heartbreak right over the phone. I, of course, she didn't. She was too busy picking up Michael. So I hung up, and I never called her again. But I did uh, get this song out of the whole deal, so... Let's, uh, let's try the, the uh, chorus. Calling Colleen When I was just 16 Calling Colleen She's the cutest girl that I ever seen Of course, you don't know her, and I am exaggerating a bit, the uh, folk singer's prerogative. But take my word for it, she was pretty cute, okay? Then in college, finally got the name. Took her out for a better dinner than she deserved. Cause it was plain to see. Just another boat afloat on her jealousy. Another boat afloat on her jealousy. What the hell does that mean? Well, I thought you said that you weren't that much of a wordsmith at this point, Lance. 
And it's true, I wasn't, but uh, I do thank you for paying such close attention and for playing along. See, actually, I wrote that verse uh, a little later on when I was in college, and just like the song says, I mean, the original verse was about Colleen and her friend Susan, who also worked at the park, and how they went out one night, and it didn't end well. But as far as the boat afloat on her jealousy goes, see, what happened was uh, one day I actually did get up the nerve to ask Colleen out in person, and she actually said yes. Now, I used to work every day, like 25 or 30 yards away from her, like I said, and uh, we both worked at Paragon Park. And I was the uh, greenskeeper at the mini golf, which uh, really was just astroturf, so it wasn't greenskeeping as much as sweeping. But greenskeeper sounds cooler than broom jockey at the putt putt golf, so that's what my resume says. And she was working the cups ride just up the midway. You know those cups that spin around, and you know they don't even spin by themselves. You have to do all the work with that stupid wheel in the middle of the cup. A totally bogus ride, in my opinion. But that wasn't her fault. I mean, she just pulled the lever that got the thing moving and then called someone when a kid would get uh, himself going way too fast and puke all over the place, right? So finally, I, I do take Colleen out to dinner, right? Uh, there's this really cool restaurant right behind Paragon Park with the view of the harbor and the boats and all that romantic stuff, although I don't really get it. I mean, I don't see what's romantic about an old lobster boat leaking gas into the harbor, but whatever, the girls seem to like it. And it wasn't really, like, it wasn't a real restaurant at all. It was this old Italian lady's house. And she had, like, a, converted her living room and dining room into a space with a couple of tables. And she would go into the kitchen and cook, like, three dishes. Probably the only three she knew. But they were really good. I mean, it was like veal parmesan back when you could still eat veal and spag and balls. Only you couldn't call them spag and balls because she'd hit you with her wooden spoon if you did. And Like I said, though, they were really, really good. And because there were only a few tables and everything was homemade and you could see the supposedly romantic boats out the window, it was also really expensive. And this may come as a shock to you all, but sweeping up the AstroTurf at the Putt-Putt Golf doesn't really pay as much as you might think. So this was a major deal for me. Colin, Colleen, I admit I was still green. Colleen, Colleen, cutest girl you ever seen. Now, even though I was still in college, you know, she was cuter than most girls I met there. So we went out, we did all that, you know, exciting stuff. And uh, what I didn't know was that once the old lady got through cooking, she would come out and sit in a chair in the corner and just watch you eat. I guess because, you know, summertime and it was hot in the kitchen or she just liked to look at the boats through her window or she was afraid you'd steal her hummels or maybe she just didn't have a TV and uh, we were the entertainment. I'm not really sure. Uh, only I was not very entertaining that evening because uh, there was just too much pressure. It was a first date with the cutest girl you'd ever seen and I was trying to eat spaghetti without slurping too hard and whipping sauce all over my members-only jacket or her jersey-knit wrap dress. I mean, hey, it was the late 70s. Give me a break. And then you got this Italian grandma sitting in the corner with a wooden spoon watching everything. So let's just say the conversation was sparse. Now, we get done with the dinner, and uh, I'm giving up like half my summer's pay. And, and we go outside where the romantic boats are, and there's this guy sitting in his car, a Pontiac. And he honks. And she goes, oh, there's my ride. Thanks so much for dinner. It was fun. And jumps in the car and takes off, leaving me just standing there. And the next day, her friend Susan tells me that uh, Colleen just went out with me to make this uh, chode in the Pontiac jealous. And furthermore, this guy's name is Michael. Hmm. Yeah. Hoisted on my own petard. So that's what just another boat afloat on her jealousy means, Okay. And I know you're going, hey, 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 this is a sad story, Lance. Those chords are perky, but we didn't come here to get bummed out. We want a happy story. And guess what? I don't have a lot of happy stories from my youth. I never had much luck with the ladies. Shocking, I know. Howsomever, this one particular story did turn out okay. See? Now I'm older, haven't talked in a while. So I gave her a quick drunk dial 
Turns out she's unmarried with five or six kids, but she needs all those hands because she's a invalid. Call her Colleen. Ain't that something? Call her Colleen. Just to see how you been. Don't think I'll be doing that again.